I'm Clever Ghoul, but you can call me Nikki. Welcome back to the channel. So I've been a little under the weather, so first of all, I apologize for this video being a little bit late, but I wanted to make sure I still got one to you this week. So thank you for your patience. And I don't know about wherever you are right now, but where I am, we're experiencing a massive nightmare heat wave. And I know it's spooky season, but this is just beyond the pale. So this week I have a very easy craft that can be done in about two or three steps total. I always love those lenticular Halloween portraits. You know, the ones where you see where they look like an old timey picture one way and then they turn and it's like, corpse situation, zombie, really scary, and then it turns back again and it looks normal. Love those. And I wanted to play with that idea. I've seen different iterations of this online, but I decided I wanted to try it out for myself. So this week we're making a haunted illusion mirror that's perfect for Halloween. So let's get into it. For materials, you'll need the following. A medium to large picture frame. I found this eight by 10 inch picture frame at HomeGoods and I really liked it because it kind of looks like one of those mirrors from Anthropology, And it also felt like it would be a perfect tabletop size mirror for a vanity. A spooky image. Feel free to just find one online and print it out. I personally didn't want to do that because I'm always a little bit nervous about copyright issues on these videos. So instead I actually purchased a larger portrait from Amazon. I can link it below, but you really don't have to buy this or do this step. This was just kind of to save me a potential headache and you can pick any image you want. You can pick really grotesque or you can pick something like the ghost from the haunted mansion. Krylon looking glass spray paint in silver. A cardboard box that you can fit your piece of glass from your frame in. Additionally, I decided to age both my picture that I'd ordered and my frame using different acrylic paints in brown and grays. You don't have to do this step, but it's just something to consider. First, you're going to very carefully take out the glass from your picture frame. When I say carefully, I mean it. I've really cut my hand up badly before just grabbing the raw edge of glass before because I wasn't paying attention. So when you take this out of the frame, don't be like me. Be sure to be extra careful and maybe use a towel to grab it if you think you're accident prone like I am. Next, I placed that piece of glass into a cardboard box and took it outside. This is just to keep the glass safe so you don't drop it and break it, but also so that it has a nice place to sit as you're spraying it. Once I was outside, I followed all of the directions on the can first shaking the can up for one to two minutes, then holding the can eight to 10 inches away from the piece of glass, spraying in a sweeping motion side to side with only a little bit of overlap. I would do a coat, wait a minute, do a coat, wait a minute, back and forth until I had five coats total. And then I left it outside for an hour to fully dry. While I left that outside to dry, I came back in and decided that my portrait needed a little tweaking done to it. If you're gonna do this at home, all you have to do here is find the picture you want and print it out so you can skip this step. But I still feel like maybe I'll walk through what I did here in case you're interested. So in order to make this picture a little creepier, I decided to first pull out a black Posca marker and black out her eyes altogether, giving her that real creepy, my soul has been taken by a demon sort of vibe. And then I let that dry. Once the Posca marker had dried, I felt like this was still a little bit too dry. So I pulled out some gray acrylic paint and a brush and just very lightly dry brushed it back and forth all over the portrait just to give it an aged, dirty sort of look. And I think this also helped add to the creep factor. Once all of that had dried, I still felt like her eyes were kind of trying to poke through from the original picture. So once again, I went back in with the Posca marker and fully blacked out those eyes. I then set that to the side to let that fully dry and then took a look at my frame and realized that mm, maybe it's a little too bright and shiny. So I pulled out some brown acrylic paint and lightly dry brushed a fine layer all over the frame to give it that beat up, dirty, aged sort of look. You know, this is a haunted mirror after all, and we want it to look like it's been through something. Once everything was dry, I cut out my picture to fit the frame, carefully put the glass back in the picture frame so that the spray paint side was facing outward, put in my picture, closed up my frame, and well that was it. Which means it's time for the reveal. Here it is. This was actually pretty hard to film because every time that I got close, I would capture myself or the camera or the light in the mirror. But as you can see, it does look like a mirror from one angle. And if you shift, you can see the creepy little girl in the picture. In person, I will say that the effect works, but it's not really as consistent as like a traditional lenticular portrait would be where you can move side to side and see it. It's a little bit more nuanced and it can really depend on the lighting and where the lighting's hitting it in order to see it well. Sometimes she's really visible and sometimes she's not as much, but I kind of like that. Either way, I pulled off having this haunted creepy mirror look and I think it's perfect for Halloween. I also think it could be really fun to play with scale in this project, either going larger or smaller. You could take an old poster frame and then have like a big portrait mirror. I don't know, you could maybe on a smaller scale have them on a gallery wall sort of situation. I don't know, I'm just spitballing here. But I'm really curious to know how you would customize this project. Would you play with scale? What kind of picture would you use? Would you go more cutesy or would you go more creepy? I really wanna know all the details, so let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.